Hey guys, it's Thomas Wells, the body mechanic. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about carpal tunnel syndrome. It's something I see pretty commonly in the office. Um, it's a, it ranks up pretty high in the workers' comp claims out there in uh, work-related disability. Uh, I see quite a few cases, at least a couple a week. Uh, sometimes it's true carpal tunnel, sometimes it's kind of a, a similar type of problem called thoracic outlet syndrome, but to treat it, we do a lot of the same things. So I'm going to give you some stretches to help you with the carpal tunnel uh, so you can work on a little bit at home. So I'm going to give you three, three basic things here. One is for the muscles uh, that pass through the carpal tunnel. Uh, one is for the nerve that passes through the carpal tunnel, and the other is for the neck and the collarbone, where the nerves, uh, the nerves can get pinched higher up in the body, giving carpal tunnel-like symptoms. Between the three, we can often get some relief. So first, a little bit about the, the actual carpal tunnel itself. So the carpal tunnel is a place, uh, if you were to look at the bones of the wrist in a palm-up position, you, you got eight little carpal bones there, all kind of compacted together. But on the palmer side, they make a sort of indent like that. And then right across the top, you have a ligament called the palmer carpal ligament. So if you were to slide your hand, uh, excuse me, slide your thumb up your hand until you kind of run into a little hard spot there, that's the palmer carpal ligament right there. So it's actually further down than a lot of people think. A lot of people think the carpal tunnel is up here, it's actually way down here, more, more in the hand really than anything else. Okay, And you've got um, a bunch of tendons, a nerve artery, and a vein that all run through there in a very tight, compact spot. So anything that causes any uh, reduction in that space or causes uh, a swelling or, or enlargement of those tendons uh, can create pressure on that nerve. And now you're going to end up with pain in the hand uh, it can be local pain, it can be pain in the distribution of the nerve, uh, it's called the median nerve, and that'll usually give you pain in the thumb, uh, forefinger, middle finger, and half of the ring finger in there. And often you'll get wasting of the thenar muscles, which are the muscles of the thumb right here. So yeah, it's bad news, uh, it's very painful, very disabling, um, but as it happens, not super hard to get rid of. So mobilizations like this are an important piece of that. Um, also things that you, you're going to want done are uh, addressing the nerve tract itself. So looking for uh, having someone uh, like myself or someone who, uh, someone who does active release uh, in particular is really useful for this to help uh, separate the nerve from neighboring muscles and ligaments for uh, to break up adhesions or mobilize adhesions that have formed, which is very common. Uh, this area tends to be really bound up. The tendons of the hand get bound up to the palmar fascia. The nerve gets stuck onto that ligament there, as do the tendons. Um, but it's all, it's all very correctable stuff. And then, and then we would follow it all the way up as well. But back to the, back to the stretches here. So the first one is for those finger flexors. Because um, you got eight, eight tendons for the fingers and one tendon for the thumb that all pass through that carpal tunnel. So for a total of nine tendons. Uh, but again, eight of them are for these fingers here. So we're gonna do a stretch for those fingers. Uh, not just a standard stretch though, our goal is to get the different layers of muscle to move independently from each other as much as possible. So we're not gonna do a standard stretch like this that you'll often see. What I'm gonna have you do is start with your elbow bent, your elbow flexed, pull the fingers back like this, and then hold that stretch as you straighten your arm out like that. You're gonna go in and out of that position. And what this is gonna do is you're gonna kinda of lock out one set of flexors and get the other one moving. So that's gonna create some good relative motion between them. And you're gonna do this for however long it takes until you feel less pull when you're in this position. Th this position is when you should feel the most tension. When you feel no more stretch here than you feel here, then you can go and switch to the other side. I recommend doing both sides, even if you only have carpal tunnel syndrome in one, uh, because oftentimes we have a lot of the same uh, circumstances and same 
imbalances and compensations on, uh, on both sides, even if we only have symptoms on one side. So it'd be good preventative work to do this on the other side as well. So again, starting wrist bent, fingers back, elbow bent, and just straighten your arm out, and you go until this feels the same as that. You, usually that's gonna take less than a minute. We're, we're not talking a, a large investment of time there. Now, a second is gonna be a flossing technique for the median nerve. Uh, median nerve starts at the lower part of the neck around C5, and it runs down the front of the arm, pr pretty much right down the middle, and then into the hand there. So I've, I've seen this taught a lot of different ways, and I actually disagree with how it's usually taught. The standard technique is you're gonna bend the wrist back with your arm extended and tilt your head away. The idea being that you're gonna stretch the nerve that way. Well, I can tell you nerves do not want to be stretched. They, they do not want to be pulled on on both ends. What they want is movement. Um, if you pull on a nerve, if you tension the nerve, it actually reduces circulation to the nerve and it can be very irritating and it can reproduce a lot of the symptoms. So what we're gonna do is we're never gonna get into a position where you're pulling the distal end of the nerve and the proximal end of the nerve all at the same time. So we're gonna alternate. So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna lean your head towards the arm uh, for the side that you wanna stretch. You're gonna extend your arm out and cock the wrist back. And then you're gonna curl it back in, taking tension off the distal part of the nerve. And then you'll stretch, um, stretch the proximal part of the nerve there. And before you do the stretch again, you lean in, cock the wrist back, curl it back in. This position just puts the nerve on slack and lean away. So this is where you're gonna have the most tension on the distal part of the nerve. So you want to do however many repetitions of this as it takes to where you feel less pull in the hand and uh, forearm by the end of it. So you'll often feel pulling kind of all along the pathway, not just in the wrist when you do this. And that'll, that'll certainly reveal some other areas of entrapment that you have. It's, it's very uncommon that carpal tunnel syndrome is purely a carpal tunnel problem. Uh, anatomically, it's usually many other areas involved. I was saying how carpal tunnel and thoracic outlet syndrome or TLS uh, are very similar. They, sh they share a lot of common problems uh, and they share, they share a lot of common causes as well. And they go together very, uh, very commonly. Um, now the third, the third thing I'm going to show you is for the first rib and the scalenes. And this is going to uh, address where the nerve can get entrapped higher up in the body. So this isn't specifically for the wrist. So this is going to be uh, a, an active stretch, meaning you're, gonna be, you're not going to pull on anything. You're actually going to use your own muscles to create the movement. So with we're going to do this for the right side here. You're going to actually push down actively pulling the shoulder down and then leaning your head as far as you can to the opposite side. And I'm gonna have you hold that for 30 seconds. For 30 seconds, relax, press down. So you're not actually pressing into anything, you're just activating the muscles that pull the shoulder down, which actually helps uh, on a neurologic level to relax the muscles that it's stretching. So you get a better stretch if you actively do it. And pull the shoulder down, and lean your head away. I've seen this done where you have uh, like a towel or a rope or something around the shoulder pinning it down. I prefer this because again, if you're actively doing it, you're gonna get more relaxation of the muscles up here that you're actually trying to stretch and more movement of that first rib, more movement of those scalene muscles in there. So again, you're gonna do three sets of about 30 seconds each. Uh, that's not a magic number, that's just, that's just an amount that I've found to be helpful and not overkill. Uh, any, if you do too much work on a nerve problem, it's not unusual that it create, uh, recreates the symptoms for a little bit. Uh, it's usually very short-lived, so if you're doing the nerve glides and you feel a little bit of the nervy stuff um, you know, for minutes or an hour or something like that, don't worry, that doesn't mean you screwed up. Um, but if, if it exacerbates it any longer than that, then, then you, may have well, you may well have done too much. Um, don't expect a flare up like that, but it's not unusual if it happens. I would say, you know, 95% of the time, 
people have zero issues with it. So again, just don't go too hard and don't be alarmed if you feel a little bit of recreation of symptoms when you do this. Uh, when you're doing this stretch here, it's very similar to um, an or orthopedic test they actually use for carpal tunnel called the, the Phelan's test or the reverse Phelan's test here. Uh, if that produces pain, feel free to just find how much you can do that doesn't produce the pain. So you can go right to that barrier, just don't try to crank through it. Uh, so, so this isn't a time to be tough, you know, there's a time to be smart. So if, if you feel pain when you bend back like this, then just ease off of that. You want it to be comfortable, but it'll feel a little bit of pull. Then from there, you can go your do, uh, and do your motion like that. So try these out, see if they work for you. Uh, even if you don't have carpal tunnel, but you're an office worker, uh, I encourage you to try these. Does just that type of work in general uh, sort of predisposes people to these sorts of problems. And you have to have these problems for quite some time before they ever reach the point of becoming symptomatic. So for all you know, you have some of, the, some of these factors already at play. You just haven't gotten to the point where there's all that inflammation yet. So this can be uh, a handy preventative tool as well. It's not just for putting out fires once they've already happened, you know, one, once the carpal tunnel's already flared up. Uh, so I hope this is useful for you and give it a try. Thank you.